everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing something a little bit different. We are going to one, recreate this look, but also make up do's and don'ts. I see a lot of people asking tips on how I do these things. So I added it all into one video while creating this look. And if you want to impress that boy in your class or like out and about, or you want to show your friends your new makeup skills you've learned, then this is a perfect video for you guys to learn them. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. As you can see, I have no makeup on whatsoever. I've just moisturized my skin. That is a number one tip. Always make sure your skin is moisturized before you start doing your makeup or before you even put your primer on, which is also in there. And essential, I'm going in with the MUA Probus Moisturizing Primer because this is great for dry skin. And it honestly does make a difference. Wearing primer stops your foundation going cakey, stops it from parting throughout the day. It hydrates your skin, it keeps your skin from getting all the dirt in it like a little bit better. And I just find primer is an essential. So for next step, I always do my brows first. I know a lot of people find this really weird. A spoolie is always an important one. Some people are lucky and don't have to fill their brows in because they're full enough. And yes, Theo is playing. But um, I always comb my front bit up. I have got a tutorial on my channel. My main tip for doing your eyebrows is do not fill the front in because it will look blocky and personally that I just don't think that looks a very good look. I'm going in with the Revolution Pomade as normal. You don't need too much of this and I always have a very fine brush but I start at the ends just to get the tip done and then I work my way inwards. I'll show you guys where I fill my brows too so they look like they've got more of that fade in them which a lot of people ask me how I do. I still fill my brows all the well, I don't fill them, I do the underneath line all the way through and then I just sort of like spool it in and blend it in but just don't fill in the front of your brows that is like a such a good rule to keep in mind another one is always follow your natural brow shape so as you can see I've just outlined mine so I'm following my natural brow shape which is looking a lot better I see girls that like do a really big arch here and make them look really square and personally I think it's better just to follow your natural shape that's the whole point of filling them in so I'm going to fill them in with the revolution brow powder because I don't like to use pomade all the way through otherwise it looks too much and like I don't know just too thick on my brows so I finished my natural brow as I've got to the end I've literally gone like got the um thinner bit and just sort of gone through it combed it through to make sure nothing's clumpy and it looks so natural and I haven't even carved them out yet that is the next step so I'm going to go off camera do my other brow and I'll be right back see I'm quite unlucky my brows are two different shapes for carving my brows up I'm using the collection lasting perfection in fair one which is like the paler shade and just a flat brush and literally carving your brows out just cleans them up it's such a good idea because I mean you don't want messy lines and like thick ends because it just doesn't look good I mean, if you can get away with like fluffy brows and like bushy brows, and I mean, go for it because I was not blessed with thick brows like my hair. So I'm just going to quickly carve these out and I'll show you the results afterwards. These are my brows now, they're carved out. As you can see, they're looking a lot neater. Like I said, one brow is a little bit different to the other because it's how my natural shape is. I just like to get a brow gel and sort of comb them into place a bit more so they stay. This is just the Prime Up one which was like a pound fifty or a pound I believe. And I like the front to look sort of fluffy as I comb it through. And obviously it keeps it in place all day, it stops the pomade smudging which I know certain pomades do. And it looks a lot better and more natural now I've combed them through. I mean, I still have bits of concealer underneath. We don't worry about that because we're obviously going to move on to that next. So moving on to eyeshadow, I have hooded eyelids for a start. So doing eyeshadow was a struggle at first, but I've sort of learned to hack it and how to do it. So I'll share my tips with you. First tip is concealer. And stay, I mean, you can use eyeshadow primer, but I prefer concealer. It gives more pigment from the palettes I use. I'm just going to use my collection one again. And also... Damping your beauty blender. I just bought a setting spray in so you can use either water or I mean setting spray I'm just lazy and use setting spray and I'm literally gonna pop some on my eyelids and just blend it in Gently just because your eyeshadow will stick better. It will last all day There's so many benefits to priming your eyelids. I mean It just smooths them out the blending's better. I can't even I could go on for ages so Primed my eyelids with my concealer. I'm going to go on to eyeshadow. So I need to find my real fluffy brush. 
I don't know if I've used it recently, so it's really messy. It's not too bad. I'm going to start with a really light colour. I'm using the Roxy palette by Revolution again. I'm using Boo. I always start with a sort of base colour. It sort of mattifies down your eyeshadow. And, I mean, it's just a good colour to start with. I mean, you can use white. I use sort of a nudie white in this. I sometimes use white. It just depends on what palette I'm using. And for the next steps for hooded eyelids, I find this is really, really important. So, personally, I sort of change my brushes up to see what works for me. This is a Poundland fluffy brush, and honestly, it's amazing. Um, you sort of get used to what brushes you use. If you do eyeshadow, then you'll know. Um, you have your ones that make you feel more comfortable and ones that are out of your comfort zone. I'm going to go in with this cookie colour, which is a light brown. Another one that's sort of a base colour, but I'm not going to drag it up so high. But a main tip for having hooded lids is actually bringing the eyeshadow above where your like crease is. Because um, otherwise you're not going to see the eyeshadow when you close your eyes and that just defeats the whole point. So I sort of blend mine upwards and sort of round. Just so it comes out. I can see this colour today in this light. Next colour you're going to be able to really see, I'm going in with pumpkin which is an orangey sort of brick colour. And I sort of like to dab it on at first just to see like how much obviously I've got off my brush because this is a really pigmented palette and I blend above my crease because I mean if not you're not going to see it and it's going to be real sad and I mean that's what you want to see especially your hooded eyelids yes it is a ball ache like I I give anyone ratings who can do the artistic stuff with hooded lids because it is really difficult cut creases are annoying to do you kind of get used to it after a while and I mean I'm getting used to doing cut creases and half cut creases and how to make my eyes look slightly bigger. Um, yeah, so here's my second colour. You can see where the blends start and how it's above my crease instead of doing it obviously like just on the lid. Another tip for small eyes, obviously dragging your eyeshadow up. This is what my mum taught me and she worked at Estee Lauder Clinique Clarins for like 25 years. So I mean there's no one better to ask these questions to is if you've got smaller eyes like I do, I blend my eyeshadow out a bit and obviously you can clean it up if you're not a fan with like concealer or your foundation, which I do anyway. But I blend it out instead of just like round, which I mean, it works for me. So I mean, give it a go if you haven't already. On to my next colour, I'm using gingerbread, which is like a brownie sort of brick colour. So I'm an orangey one and I'm just going to use this on the outer corner. And I mean, darker colours in the outer corner is a thing anyway. But obviously remember to blend this up like you did with the rest of your colours. Otherwise, I mean, it's just going to look a bit strange. So I've blended this in with the rest of the colours. And you can really see it starting to pull together. It's a very autumnal look, which I rate. So this next tip isn't just for hooded eyelids. I find this would work for sort of any shaped eyes. Um, so I've got my Revolution Cut Crease Canvas. And this is how to find where to cut your crease. Because obviously if you do it in the lid, you're not going to see the glitter and anything you put on it. So I start from my inner corner. And the best way to find out is to like sort of look up. And you can see where to cut your crease and where to outline it. It works really well. And it sort of creates a neat line as well. So if you look up, you get that smudged eyelid. But we don't worry about that. And then you can just carve it out. And voila! So as you can see, you can see where my crease is when I open my eye and where I've cut to. It's a little bit wider. I'm going to go back in with my fluffy brush and I'm going to take cola and a bit of gingerbread and sort of blend here just to darken it a bit. And obviously this is only a half cut crease, so I kind of want to make it look a little bit better than what it does. So like I said, my outer corner is darker. And doing it this way, instead of just concealing your eyelids or just adding eyeshadow, make sure your eyes look like, make out, they look bigger, or a way to put it. So I've added darker to the outside of this, and I'm just going to blend it out because it doesn't look very blended to me right now. For this ne next bit is personal preference. I like to use my fingers, but for where all the like concealer is, I'm going in with Iconic, which is a white gold colour. And I'm just going to put it on with my fingers because personally I find this works better. You get more pigment this way. And it just sticks better and my aim is just better with like, instead of getting it everywhere with my fingers, believe it or not. That sun is so, so wrong. That came out so wrong. This is a little trick I always use myself. And why is my camera moved? Sorry about me. Um, I'm using the Poundland Gold Liner. And what I'm going to do, where your crease ends with your crease. Pardon me. I'm going to do a glitter line. So I'm using a very 
fine line. But I mean, my hand is not the sturdiest. I can admit that. I literally love this. I've gone through so many bottles of it. It's so good, especially for power round. So here's the final eyeshadow look for you guys. It's a half cut crease. It's made my eyes look a bit bigger and you can still see like it's not too much either. You can still see obviously where my eyeshadow is on my lid. You can actually see it. My next step is foundation and this is a really important one so bear with me. So a really important step for foundation is choosing your colour. I see a lot of girls wearing it too dark or too pale. Do not match it on your wrist, the back of your hand. If you want to match your foundation, I always got taught this. Do it on your neck because... I mean, your arms are always more tan than your face and so are your hands. So do it here and do the three and obviously match which one's closest to your skin. I've got a little bit of a darker one at the moment because it's been summer and I always change it up in the winter. Obviously my skin tone changes, but I mix two together. This one's my hydrating one and this one's for coverage. And personally, this works for me, but just, I see girls that actually wear foundation. If you're wearing fake tan, I can understand having a darker one, but I mean, apart from that, why would you want like, necklines and stuff and it just personally isn't a nice look for me it's obviously these are really similar colors they are very similar to my face as well i just like to blend them in before i put them on my face and i'm gonna dump my beauty blender again and just pop this all on i've quickly popped my foundation on that's better it also another thing for doing your foundation after your eyeshadow is it clears up any fallout underneath and it sort of gives you that neat line without having to use tape and stuff. And obviously, if you use tape while you've got foundation on, it is going to take half your foundation off. I don't know why I was looking in that to think it was a mirror. Um, my powder, I'm using the Revolution one again, which I absolutely love. And I just dot it on. It's just to set my face so, like, by the end of the day, it isn't literally all parting and coming off. So I don't use a lot of this. And at the moment, I don't know if I'm going to contour today. Shall I contour? yeah i might do a little bit i don't really contour very often to be honest with you and i just do it down my neck so everything blends in a lot of people contour with blush nowadays now i'm not going to do that but a blush tip is just dab it on your apple so if you smile you get your little cheekbones come out and that's where i got told to put your blush and i've seen loads of people do this i'm going in with the Too faced sweetheart blush which i recently picked up and oh my god i adore it it is so gorgeous it's very glowy as well you don't need a lot i'm just using the real techniques I don't even know what this is actually a blush brush and you sort of smile and you can get your cheekbone like the apples of your cheeks as it's called this is a very glowy one this is a first impression guys very glowy blush i kind of like this i forgot to do a step before i did my blush but this is probably a better step i like to set my face a little bit because obviously i've put all that makeup on and now i'm gonna go on to mascara i don't think i'm gonna put lashes on today because i really can't be bothered but i do have a tutorial for individual and strip lashes on my channel so don't forget to go check them out i will link them below for you and for mascara i'm using the revolution one uh, before i do that i need to get my eyelash curlers i really thought eyelash curlers made a difference but recently i've started using them on my false ones and on my real ones and they really do make a difference like oh my god i just didn't think they did so i just hold mine for a few seconds on each eyelash or lashes oh my god like my lashes are going so much recently Another tip I'm not going to do today because to be honest with you, I cannot be bothered to walk to my bedroom, which is literally behind me. But um, another tip is to add clear mascara before you do your normal mascara. This one's very clumpy, but I do really, really like it. And I mean, 20 layers of mascara and spiral lashes is not a look. So, I mean, I do quite a few strokes on mine. Mine are growing, thankfully, so I can actually have lashes again. But I have some tea to tell you guys, so, well, tea, I'm joking. I actually have some gossip to tell you guys. This is a latte, a caramel one from Morrison's, I believe. It's actually really good. Sorry, my throat's really hurting from coughing, so this is really helping it instead of drinking fizzy. Um, tea, so I lost my job on Monday. It just didn't work out. It was a, Personally, it was a toxic place, and I was getting really depressed and... I mean, even my boss at the time said I was better in the beauty industry, which, come on, like, obviously I am. And Friday, I had an interview, so that would have been yesterday. This, no, yesterday was Saturday, Friday, so two days ago. Because today is Sunday. I had an interview at Super Dragon Ipswich, so, like, massive makeup revolution store there and everything. And I got the job, so I'm now officially a member of Super Drug, which I have wanted this job for a long time, and... I finally got it and I'm so so happy to be able to inspire other people in the shop and stuff 
to give them tips and stuff and yeah I'm just so excited to work there and the girls were so friendly if you girls are watching this at some point for some reason oh my god you were so friendly and welcoming like it was so nice to see that but yeah I just wanted to let you guys know I'm so happy to start working there and I start on Tuesday oh, on the last part of this look I'm not going to go in with a really white highlighter I was going to use a pinky white one but I'm going to use more of a golden one so I'm using the MUA glow palette and I'm using the top one um, I personally don't get on with fan brushes that well anymore. I like to use sort of like a slanted eyeshadow brush and I sort of just use the back end of it and sort of work my way around it because I find this just brings out the pigment more. It's neater and doesn't go all over my face and it just works better for me. I mean, if you get on with fan brushes, fair enough, but I prefer like using little eyeshadow brushes and stuff. I've tried cut a few brushes in my time. I think at one point I've probably used a little blusher brush or highlighter, which is a horrendous thing to admit but yeah it's probably true I always highlight my nose and another way to make your lips look bolder if you haven't seen how to make my how to make your lips look bigger in minutes video then check that out but I always do my cupid's bow um if you want the really glowy look as well because I mean I'm really bad at highlighter but if you want to know where your highlighter goes or a tip for helping you guide your highlight then we should do my inner corner because I mean inner corner glow is like a thing oh pardon me and we love that um, a tip for doing your highlighter, so I'm just going to set my face a little bit more with setting spray because this gives you a sort of dewy look, so I'm just going to wait for to dry. There we go. Another tip for this is doing sort of a C shape, so you sort of go round, and that's how I got told to do my highlight, and it's worked well to be honest. And one thing I always get compliments on is my highlighter. Step, this is one of the last steps, is lip liner. I see a lot of girls overline their lips and it is so obvious you're wearing nude lipstick and brown lip liner. Mm -mm. Either wear the same colours or like a lip same as like or closest to your lip colours. I use Natural by NYX for mine. I have quite naturally pink lips. Yes, they have foundation on at the moment. Foundation also helps lipstick stay on better. Um... I'm using the Primark pencil liner. Does this even have a shade on it? I don't know if it does. Do they Primark have shades on this? Oh my god, it doesn't actually say. It's sort of a brownie nude colour. Uh, and an easy way to line your lips, even with smaller lips. Why not small and why not big? I wish they were bigger. For the top, sort of do a cross on your cupid's bow. And that seems to work out. I always rest my finger on my chin, it helps like guide it so you don't get wobbly lines. Overlining your lips isn't a bad thing. Another tip, if you want bigger looking lips, I'm just going to add my MAC Velvet Teddy, it's a mini one. If you want bigger looking lips as like an illusion, add gloss in the middle, like here, and it makes your lips look fuller. I'll teach you another little trick afterwards. My last step of this, I'm just going to teach you guys a little trick. So I'm going to get a very pointed eyeshadow brush, you can use sort of any for this. Get your contour kit or your bronzer if you want a fuller looking lip. Oh my god, I can never open this palette. It is honestly the worst to open. It's the Im Imagination palette. Just use any sort of contour colour. And another tip is just dab a tiny bit on the tip of your brush. And get the little, like, you know, like your little mark underneath your little dimple bit. Yeah. And just sort of gently blend it in. And it gives the illusion your lips more pouty and it's just such a good idea. Hope these tips help you impress that boy you want to get or wow people with like your makeup skills and any way you wanted to use this for. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Go click subscribe and let's hit 1.4k and I'll see you guys in my next video.